for those of you who don't know, the Monaghan Report was an in-depth study of the black family and how certain policies have affected its growth. Now, the, the Monaghan Report itself was just an individual study, but the Monaghan's scissors was basically a graft. They had a chart to where they they followed how when black male unemployment went down, welfare cases still went up. And it just goes to show you, it goes to show you that even during the times when black men are financially stable and things are good, the mothers of their children or the women in general would still go out and seek government assistance. And Monaghan proves and shows that this is a cultural tradition thing that's been passed down in which these females don't want decent productive leadership in the home. So let's hop in this article. In the mid-1960s, a social scientist noted something ominous that came to be called Monaghan scissors. Two lines on a graph crossed, replicating the blades of a scissors. The descending line charted the decline in the minority male unemployment rate. The ascending line charted the simultaneous, the simultaneous rise of new welfare cases. The broken correlation of improvements in unemployment and decreased welfare dependency shattered confidence in social salvation through economic growth and reduced barriers to individual striving. Perhaps the decisive factors in combating poverty and enabling upward mobility were not economic but cultural. They figured it out. This is cultural, dude. All right. The habits, mores, and dispositions that equipped individuals to take advantage of opportunities. This was dismaying because governments know how to alter incentives and, and remove barriers, but not how to manipulate culture. Oh, look, man, I'm doing these articles. I'm explaining this stuff for the younger generation that was born into this. If you were born in the year 2000 and you walk into this shit on this shit on the Internet, you need to know what happened and which transpired and, and, and what transpired. All right. And I'm outlining this for the younger boys, younger black boys and younger black girls so they can see how that after the 1960s, the feminist movement um, and the women's liberation movement and the sexual liberation movement, my bad, really caused the decline in the black family structure. And it was mainly due to your mom making poor choices in the father she picked for you. She wanted to pick the local drug dealer, wanted to pick the uh, local gang member. And that's fine. That's her choice. I don't care. Okay. But it comes out to your development as the kid. And this is why you were developed and you grew up in a fucked up childhood. Because your mom decided to pick the local drug dealer. And hey, that was her choice. But her choice affected you. She's too stupid and dumb to see how her choice affects her kids or she's just too selfish but yeah that's what you're going to realize that <laughs> after reading this report you're going to realize how, have realized how selfish your mom is and if you want to be a dumbass and still be some mama's boy mama mama then that's your dumbass you're going to be kicked to the side with her dumbass <laughs> let me move on dude i'll be getting on my fucking uh tangents man i really i i, I got a um issue with these black dudes Raised by these dysfunctional single moms, and these dudes just go on like it's no big deal. But hey, it is your mom, and if and, and hey, if your mom loved you and treated you right, fine. You know, but even that's not enough. But still, she, I mean, she didn't intentionally try to hurt you or fuck you over. But if she, but if she was one of these ignorant ghetto bitches, get in the car, little nigga. Yeah, 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 yeah. That bitch is evil and twisted, and you're fucked up. You're a fucked up motherfucker, and I don't care how how good you hide it. If your mom was one of those ignorant ghetto bitches walking around with those shower caps on, one of those whores, yeah, you're a fucked up black person. <laughs> you are. Where was I at? Where was I at? All right. The broken correlation. This was dismaying because government knows. All right, I read that shit. Let me see. A deepened understanding of cultural rule. All right, let me get into this. This was dismaying because government knows how to alter incentives and remove barriers, but not how to manipulate culture. The assumption that the condition of the poor must improve as microeconomic conditions improve was to be refuted by a deepened understanding of the critical role of 
the family as the primary transmitter of the social capital essential to self-reliance and betterment. Exactly. exactly. I like this talk. I'm liking this talk. See, social capital is essential. You motherfuckers don't know because you were raised by a whore. Okay. If you don't have trust okay, between people in your neighborhood, you're not going to be able to have businesses and have thriving relationships. What was that? I'm talking about between black men. When you're killing and robbing each other, selling drugs, you're breaking the trust. And it breaks the social capital, which is essential for self-reliance and betterment. Family structure is the primary predictor of social outcomes, as Daniel Patrick Monahan knew in 1965. 50 years ago, this... 50 years ago this month, Monaghan, then a 37-year-old social scientist working in the lab, working in the lab, in the labor department, wrote a report, The Negro Family, The Case for National Action. All right. Now, like I said, bro, in the 1960s, it was crucial, bro. Vital. This is when the report was made. 1965, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson was given this report, but he didn't want to... This report basically called for the full integration economically of black men into the economy. But in 1965, Lyndon B. Johnson and the white Congress didn't want to do that. They decided to go ahead and pass the Hart Seller Act, which, which, which allowed millions of foreigners into this country. <laughs> so like I, said, my, like I said in my other video, Lyndon B. Johnson and the Congress, instead of fixing the black problem and, and, social, and fully integrating us economically the government said fuck that we hate you black folks so much and even though you've been here since the 16th and 17th century we're going to we're going to pass the heart seller act and bring millions of foreigners into this country see <clears throat> monahan told him this monahan report told the president and congress hey you're going to have to integrate these black folks because their social ills are not going to get better until then. It's a oh, hell fucking no. But see, them signing that hard seller act backfired because now their children, their grandchildren, the, the white Congress who signed that, that bill, their grandchildren are now competing with the same foreigners that were sent here to phase out black folks. All right. And, and, and those Congress folks who signed that um, hard seller act, their grandkids are these alt-right identitarian pussies that are flipping out over the demographic shift. So, I mean, you fast forward to today, the Hart Seller Act, it really came back to bite these white folks in the butt because their great grandkids are out here competing with the same foreigners, again, sent here to uh, replace black folks, but that's another video. All right, let me finish this. Among the tangible of pathologies he associated with the absence of fathers, was a continually renewed cohort of inadequately socialized adolescent males. Yes, yes, yes! 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 Let me read this motherfucker again. Okay? You my, you my bro, uh, Monahan. What's your name, Patrick? Yeah, Patrick, you the man, bro. Cool white dude right here. Let me see. Among the tangible of pathologies he associated with the absence of fathers was a continually renewed cohort of inadequately socialized <laughs> adolescent males, all right? These are black boys growing up in these single mother raised homes, all right? Not being properly socialized. Not being, um, giving that male, that male direction and guidance. Productive male direction and guidance. And they're just basically surrounded by their aunts and this is why a lot of black boys 13 and 14 years old have that um struggle with finding a masculine identity so monahan monahan put this in the monahan put this in this report he figured it out and this is how the uh folks who wanted to make a profit off of this exploited it by opening up private prisons and promoting um the NWA culture after the 19, uh, 1980s, the late 80s. They knew that these black boys growing up in these fi these female-led households are going to be in search of a masculine identity. And they're going to go out and find a dysfunctional identity. 
Either that or they're just going to give up and just become a fruity, a fruit loop. So instead of becoming a fruit loop, what these, these, these black boys do, they go out and they gravitate towards the most destructive form of male masculinity. Oh, nigga, I'm a gangster. I'm a, I'm gangster, you dog. You can't even fight, you pussy. You, most of those, those pussies over there in L.A., Chicago, when it comes to hands, as far as gangs, those, when it comes to fighting, man to man, they can't. One on one, they can't. These are pussy. These aren't the black dudes from back in the day that got that, you know, that West Philly reputation of throwing hands and New York, you know, throwing hands. Now, nah, these are pussy ass generations now. So these black guys today, they're not thorough. They, 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 don't, they, they can't throw, throw down like that. And a lot of these black gangs members today, the younger ones, they're going to get ran through by these Hispanic gang members. They don't got that heart like the black dudes back back in the day. Because these Hispanic dudes, they're growing up in strong patriarchs. So they got, they got fucking 13 uncles. They got their four grandfathers. They have that solid male background where these black boys today are being raised by their dysfunctional ghetto mom watching Wendy Williams all day, surrounded by his female cousins in the house. There's no way those, those these black boys in the inner city are going to be able to stand against these strong patriarch, these these strong Hispanic dudes and non-black dudes coming from these pa these patriarchs. They're going to run holes through these young black boys that are halfway fruity, raised by their single emotional mom. So yeah, watch within the next ten to twenty years, watch what transpires over in, in these inner cities. I heard over in Baltimore got Hispanics running through um. Those young black dudes over there knocking them down and shit. No pushback. Because they're raised by their moms. Pussies over there. Down in Atlanta. They said Hispanics are, um, Hispanics are, are, doing, are, running, are running through uh, the, the younger black dudes. Because they're pussies raised by their fucking pussy ass moms. This is what you get. And it's going to continue. Black boys raised in single dysfunctional households cannot stand against non-black boys raised in strong patriarchs. That's what this is going to show also in the future. You, you, look, these broads are going to realize their decision on picking bad fathers and not raising their children right is going to come back to haunt them. Where was I at? All right. This meant dangerous neighborhoods and schools were disciplining displaced teaching. He would later write, a community that allows a large number of young men to grow up in broken families dominated by women never acquiring any stable relationship to male authority that community acts for and gets chows let me read this again for you guys he would later write a community that allows a large number of young men to grow up in broken families dominated by women your aunts your mom your ignorant ghetto mom bitch your aunts your, your female cousins. This is all who will surround these black boys in the house. The mom is sitting there doing somebody's hair. Wendy Williams is on. Days of, or some soap operas on. The house is full of bitches, women. And you got these little 13, 14 year old black boys sitting there with nothing to fucking do. All this female energy. This is what, this is what you fools are raised in. My dad raised me gorillas. Lions, my dad, I was around that, 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 that shit, productive male shit, when you pussies were around some fucking, <laughs> you pussies were around this bullshit, watching Wendy Williams with your mom, you know who you are, motherfucker, stay away from me, stay the fuck away from me, alright, <clears throat> academic sensitivity enforcers and race mongers denounced him as a racist who was blaming the victim, of course, of course. Today, 72% of African American children are born to single women. 48% of first births of all races and ethnicities are, are to unmarried women. And more than 3 million mothers under 30 are not living with the fathers of their children. Again, I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm making these articles and these videos for the new generation, for the younger generation. Okay, I want you to walk out here and I want you to know why the things are the way they are after the sexual liberation movement in the 70s, okay? I don't want you to, you know, just walk into this shit, find out what the fuck's going on. You got to know what transpired, youngster. You got to know, okay? Who was that? In 1966, Sergeant Shriver 
head of President Lyndon B. Johnson's war on poverty, was asked how long it would take to win the war. He replied, about 10 years. The conventional wisdom was John F. Kennedy's cheerful expectation that a rising economic tide would lift all boats, which was bullshit. America now knows that bad family structure defeats good economic numbers. Again! I like this white boy who wrote this. America now knows that bad family structure defeats good economic numbers. And the Democrats know this. That's, that's why they continue to promote dysfunctional black family. Today, a nation dismayed by inequality and the in, in, intergenerational transmission of poverty must face the truth that political scientist Lawrence Mead initiated nearly 25 years ago. The inequalities that stem from the workplace are now trivial in comparison to those steaming from family structure. What matters for success is less whether your father was rich or poor than whether you knew your father at all. Hell yeah, Machiavelli. Ah, oh, Machiavelli, I'm digging this fucking, um, this writer, bro. Hey, this white boy who wrote this shit is on point. Let me reread this. Hold on. The inequalities that stem from the workplace are now trivial in comparison to those stemming from family structure. What matter? What matters for success is less whether your father was rich or poor than whether you knew your father at all, okay? This speaks to these women going out here, getting pregnant by the local drug dealer, okay? The local gang member, the local pimp, or the local predator. Again, it's her choice, but that's the choice your mother made for your father, which goes to show you how little she thought of your dumb ass before she got you. Hey, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, dude. I'm telling you on how, uh, how the, your mother em fully embraced the sexual liberation movement in the 70s and was just fucking, 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 fucking. And if she didn't, why wasn't she fucking a car mechanic? Why wasn't she fucking an electrician? Why wasn't she fucking a decent, productive black man that was a carpenter? No, she was fucking a drug dealer. That's fine. That was her choice. Now she, you here you are, motherfucker, and you don't got a dad. You didn't have the man to throw the ball with when you were 13 and 14. Why? Because your mom was selfish, bro. She didn't care about, she didn't care about having that decent man there that would hang around to throw the ball with you. When you were a little guy, just a little guy. <laughs> no, she didn't give a fuck. She wanted him because he had swag. He had rims and shit. He was the high right, fine, bitch, you dumb whore. You're going to suffer, and your kids are going to suffer. Your living conditions are going to suffer, you bitch. All right, let me keep on going. All right. Monaghan, undaunted by his shrill critics who stifled debate and research, brought his barber with the subject, suggesting that an important de determinant of the inequality of American schools was this was their was their proximity to the Canadian border. I, look, man, these motherfuckers are bringing. Hold on, let me see. They're bringing up. They're making some excuses now. That is high cognitive outputs measured by standardized tests correlates less with high per pupil expenditure than a high percentage of two parent families, which are not scattered randomly. The election of Kennedy was celebrated in academia as the empowerment of the professorate. I have no idea, but I never saw that shit. Monaghan ruefully remembered the euphoric expectation of the direct transmission of social science into governmental policy. We still are far from fully fathoming all that has caused the social regression about which Monaghan was persistent. persistent. There, was, there has been what he called, man, I don't know what the fuck the words this motherfucker is using. I tro, I trogenic, hold on, trogenic, I trogenic government and I trogenic element being one caused by a physician or medicine. Some welfare policies provided 
perverse incentives for absent fathers. But the longer Monaghan lived, the more he believed that culture controls more than incentives do. So, I mean, he's basically saying that this is a tradition. This is cultural. And these black bras know this shit. I just want your kids to know it, you bitch. And they're going to know. The history books are going to show what you bitches did. It's going to show how selfish you are. So you can try to play dumb and deny it. No, the truth is going to have to come out. And it's coming out. I mean, it's coming out. So, yeah, this is just culture. It's, it has nothing to do with poverty, uh, racism, discrimination. No, it's how your mother raised you, you fucker. You motherfucker. You know who you are. You know how you were raised by that dysfunctional bitch. Evil, twisted, ghetto bitch. You know how she raised you. Hey, this is going to go on um, Black Avengers anyway. Or, yeah, uh, Free Speech Avengers if, if YouTube takes it down. But, yeah, man. You know how you were raised. The way you, the way you were raised is why you're fucked up. That's why you fucked up, man. It's not because of racism, no. Your mom didn't read and write and do homework with you. She didn't teach you your history. She, she just had you because she wanted free Section 8. She wanted food stamps and she wanted um, health care. You were a survival tactic for her. This is, this is that, this is that uh, selfish, I don't care mentality that your mother had. Where was that? The role of social science, he would write, lies not in the formulation of social policy, but in the measurement of its results. Not in post postulating what will work, but in demonstrating what does work, and increasingly what does not work. Chastened by the abstinency of things, Monaghan recalled a Howard, a Harvard chemist defining the problem that exists in the physical science and perhaps in social science when in Monaghan's phrasing the number of variables interacting with one another in any given situation makes this, that situation extraordinarily complicated and difficult to fathom. Monaghan asked the chemist at what number of, vulner of variables this problem begins. The chemist replied three all right let me see and thus it is shown that lds doctrine truly is what science and research will ultimately find in the case that lds hold on that's not even fucking let me see this is this, is, this is something totally different no it's not let me, let me finish i don't know what lds stands for i i, I, I gotta figure this out later but look let's finish this real quick hold on does all right and thus it is shown that lds doctrine truly is what science and research will ultimately find in the cases that lds doctrine addresses does lds doctrine ultimately address all cases is it the answer to the ultimate question of life the universe of everything the fuck this has nothing to do with the fuck why did i read that shit all right man now here's a comment section you've got a bunch of uh black feminists trying to Make an excuse. Let me see. No, the study is right. Let me see. To me, let me see. To me, that comes across as more blaming the poor. Yeah, you fucking feminist. Look, dude, you can't hide the truth. Okay? Okay? I gotta go. I gotta go. Young thugs in this motherfucker. Don't break up the fight. Let them rumble. <laughs> Don't make enemies with me. With me. Some say my criminal experience is legendary. I do what's necessary. Niggas wanna see me buried. Worry if you come and hurry. I ain't going down. Fuck the world. I'm a thug. Tell them gain nothing. Stop me but a slug. I went from drug dealer to a shot caller. From off the block, no longer rocking. Putting money in my pocket. Next to why I baller. Bitch nigga, I'm prepared to die before I fry. I hit the weed so I be forever high. My eyes to see so much of misery. So before I flee, I hope if I let the Lord pick the first to bleed. Bitches don't wanna see me leave. Forever thugging. Tell them to bury me a G on that. Everything I love and fuck the law cause the raw niggas ain't free This picture's clear but we can't see <laughs> This game is jealousy, don't let them change it That's what they keep on telling me, motherfuck the fame I can't sleep cause I keep hearing peeps loaded my spur Wrapped in my sheets, don't make enemies with me I try to tell these motherfuckers they ain't see Don't make enemies with me